This is my perspective discussion series where women talk budo. Welcome everyone to my perspective women talk budo season two. We released the first season about a year ago, so we wanted to make an episode zero to tell you about where we are now and what our plans are for the following season. Uh, we're both students at Aikido of London with Ismail, Ismail Hassan Sensei, and my name is Fran Torres. I, I've been, I came back to the dojo after, uh, after the pause during the pandemic. I came back in, in 2021 and I've been training there since. Uh, recently, I got my shodan and I've been helping in the, during the beginner's class on Saturdays. Here is Kathy Okada. And Kathy, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Yes, hello. Um, yeah, as, as Fran said, um, I'm an Aikido practitioner. I practice, um, I train in London with Isma Hassan Sante at Aikido of London. Um, I'm also one of the assistant instructors there. And just recently, just this year, actually, um, my husband and I, um, Ivan Mello, just opened our own dojo in West London called Gyodokan. So... Um, we'll probably talk a bit more about that later. Um, but also, if you want to find out more about us, <laughs> even more about us, then you can watch um, episode one of the first season where we kind of talk about our background a, li a little bit more. Um, then there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's your invitation to catch up <laughs> with the podcast. We wanted also to thank everyone who has listened to the first season, even if you listen to a section of an episode we're very grateful for that we're also very grateful for the positive comments that we received and the different ideas for discussions uh, those uh, who contacted us to tell us how we had inspired different uh, conversations new conversations in your dojos uh, yeah made us very 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 happy uh, for having for having an impact uh, be way beyond our our own dojo we are aware that some of the topics are very difficult to address and it won't be different this season uh, because we want to talk about things that are not spoken very often, uh, but we will do our best to, to treat these topics in a respectful manner and also provide a, an open space for our guests to, to show their perspectives. We released the last episode about a year ago, if, if not yeah. long. I think and, it was more than a year ago, yeah. Yeah, more than a year ago. So, and you were in a completely different part of the world. You were in Japan, Kathy. I was. Uh, do you want to tell us about your adventures in Japan? Our, my adventures. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, Ivan and I decided to um, go to Japan <laughs> and decided to kind of to go without really a clear idea of when we were going to come back. Um, so that was a bit scary, but yes. exciting <laughs> as well. Um, and uh, we actually ended up spending most of our time in in Kyoto with Okamoto Sensei um, in her dojo and her her lovely students um, as well. Um, which was it was really great. Like we we made a lot of really lovely friends and um, had some great training. Um, we participated in a couple of, oh, not a couple of, sorry, one seminar. It was a really great seminar at the um, Kyoto Butoku Den, um, in the in the old one. So it's it's an oh, wow. absolutely incredible building. Um, mm. So yeah, that was great, great energy. Yeah, I suppose when we were there, it was kind of um, a decision about what we were going to do mm. next because I suppose we we both knew that at some point we wanted to start our own thing our own dojo and so it was a case of where would we do it would we do it in japan would we do it in um back in the uk and then in the end it it just felt like it was the right thing to come back um and continue here also you know it's like i i didn't feel ready to leave my teacher yet mm -hmm. like i still feel like there's I mean, there's yeah. so much more to. I was going to ask you because you you started you you started doing Aikido with Ismail Sensei, and how was that process of 
going to a, a, another country, another city, another teacher, another group of people and train. It's like starting from zero, but not because you, you knew. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, um, I mean, I've trained in Japan before because, you know, we've, we, we went um, some years ago. Of course, I was far less experienced then. Um, so what was quite interesting was going again um, last year, having more training under my belt and having more experience. And um, so it was it was really interesting. We, we we trained a little bit at Hombu Dojo. And and then, of course, we uh, we visited Hori Sensei in Sanda, mm. um, which was really great. Um, and I think the main thing for me, like I was the thing I was really excited about was um kind of observing how Okamoto sensei leads and how she runs her runs her dojo because um you know as as fantastic as a teacher as we know is um Ismail I wanted to see how a woman would do it you know and and um of course it's a different environment as you said it's it's in Japan as well so so um so it is a little bit different, but um, but that was the main thing for me. Like it was kind of it was quite inspiring, really. And um, yeah, and her dojo is great. It's like a big, very mixed dojo, like lots of different ages, um, lots of women, lots of men, and it's very international as well. Mm -hmm. So, and I think the thing that I liked about it was like, yes, it was a different dojo, but the thing that their dojo and our dojo have in common is it's like it's full of people that love to train which Thanks. which sounds ridiculous because you think well of course everyone loves to train but I mean like they really love to train they're there every day every class you know they get up early in the morning and we don't have morning classes so <laughs> but um not that I'm encouraging them but you know <laughs> I'm not a morning person so please don't <laughs> yeah me neither. luckily I don't have sensei is either so <laughs> um, of course we, we just have Saturdays but um but yeah that was the thing that I liked about it is that it was full of people that loved to train and they were really really welcoming to us um so it was great and it was it was good um kind of just just having an opportunity to train with with new people and different bodies and mm. of course you know there's um our dojo uh as in Aikido of London is as we've spoken about before it's very mixed in terms of um gender age um levels but you still do to a certain extent get used to training with people yes exactly you know? So it's really it's it was really good to be able to you yeah. know train with all these different people and yeah so interesting very yes. cool. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to like jump the gun because some of it we might cover some of it of some of your experiences in sure. the upcoming episodes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I find it really interesting. I find really interesting to having had that that experience of. Uh, going to a different dojo with the at that po at that time with the prospect of maybe finding a longer term place to study and having to adapt to get to know different personalities and a different way of training even if it's aikido there there are the teacher makes a huge difference for difference for example so yeah probably we'll discuss that <laughs> in the in the future yeah absolutely um so but anyway long story short we we came back um and we've opened a dojo in last last september we opened a dojo in ealing in london mm -hmm. um called Kyodokan, and that's mine and my husband's dojo and um uh, yeah and it's been going really well um we have we've had ismail sensei come and teach and we've had um you know you guys come we had a bunch of people from Aikido of london come down and had a kind of a big opening class and it's been yeah it's been really positive um it's been challenging as well in various ways as it as it would be um uh but yeah again we can we can go into into that a bit more so that's that's what I've been up to basically um and then of course one of the other things that happened so shortly after I think that was in September and then a couple of months later was it in October you had 
a surprise grading, your showdown grading. <laughs> well, it was kind. It was kind of a surprise, wasn't it? Not not entirely. Yes. <laughs> yes, it, it, so in July, probably maybe two weeks before you 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 came back, Sensei told me, oh, you should start thinking of your Shodan. <laughs> I remember you texted me. You said, yes. Sensei told yes. me to. And what did you say to him? You went, I, 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 I think I asked, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Sensei said, uh, that's not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> and I said like, no, yes, I'm ready. I will start preparing for it. And yeah, immediately. Yeah. Uh, I remember getting the text from you when I was in Japan saying, like, <laughs> Sensei told me to prepare for my showdown. I was like, yes. <laughs> I kind of had I kind of he didn't tell me, but I, I kind of sensed it was coming. Uh -huh. So <laughs> yeah. So tell us a bit more about it, Fran. What what happened was that it, it knowing that I had to prepare like made me focus uh much more on on the details of the techniques because I I was so I I was already training very regularly like being very very like conscious of the work that I was doing but this meant that it was like more like a formal instance where I had to demonstrate that I had a, a good foundation that I knew uh, uh, the te the techniques properly and could do them with uh a good level of, of, of confidence. So <clears throat> what I did was I started to we we you know Kathy that we have these three hours on on but at that point at that time it was two hours with a one one class and then one one free hour on Saturdays. And you when you came as soon as you came back you started helping me to uh to to work on the memory side <laughs> of the preparation <laughs> and yeah. also on not uh, hesitating that that much and then also as when the memory part of it was was solved on the also we started working on on the details and i had a lot of a lot of support uh, from you uh from avira you can meet if you listen to the first season, uh, from from Ed, uh, from from Beth as well, so it was really nice uh, uh, from Ivan and from everyone because I was like asking questions to everyone, so it was really nice to have the whole all of my friends in the dojo like rowing in the center yeah. to prepare for for my. For but the my key season. thing, the key thing about your grading though, was that you were told um, it was going to be in December. It was going to be in December. Yes. So oh, I was wow. la, 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 preparing for December, very relaxed. <laughs> and, and then I had this conference. I had to wake up at 6 a.m. Then I was coming back to London and saying, oh, uh, should I go to the dojo? Yes, yes. I'll just go. I have my, my, my uniform with me, everything with me. I'm ready. I got there. And suddenly the most... Uh, intense class begins with like one hour of suariwasa <laughs> and and sensei is like you train with Luis and then you train with Kathy and Kathy was beating me up and <laughs> I, I was thinking like what did I do <laughs> Why are they me up so I was mad at you <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> I mean it was great because uh, I had to, you know, you get into that mode, okay, I have to move otherwise. Yeah, you were giving it back though, so it was good. I was, I was trying to get you, because I knew, right, it was, it was a, I knew it was happening, and I'd known for a couple of weeks, because actually, I think it was meant to happen like the week before, but then it was something like you weren't there, or like someone else wasn't there that might be up to I think I was, I was, I had a cold. You were, yeah, you were unwell, that yes. was it. So that's why I was like, Fran, are you coming? Like, are you coming today? And um, <laughs> but yeah, so I knew, I knew about it. So I was trying to get you like pump, pumped up. So you took I, the opportunity to beat me. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. By the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and I feel it was good because you gave it back, and then yeah, and then I didn't what know what was happening. But I, as you say, like I kept giving it back, and then after. But then it started to become it more started to take the shape of a grading, didn't it? Yes, yes, because then he said stand up and everyone was sitting down because the, most of this worry was apart was 
in, in pairs, but then probably was too long and then we, we were called to do it uh, in the middle. And and then we, we he said like stand up, but I I never suspected it was degrading. I thought that it was a mock grading. Mm -hmm. uh, when we had been there for ten minutes already, or I lose I lose track I lost uh, the track of time really, but for what seemed uh, ten minutes. Yeah. And um, so I thought, ah, oh, this I ha okay, I have to do really well because this is a, a mock grading. And then the class I thought at some point I thought oh she's she's gotten done now like she's um wow no, I never I I was convinced it was a, a mock one and yeah. there was one technique that I didn't do it uh, the way we usually do it and uh, but for luckily it worked out um and there I kind of went back to thinking because I I really it really helped the building up phase because I, I was very focused and just there. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I made that mistake, I like I went back and that was when I thought, ah, oh, this is a mock exam. And then <laughs> I mm -hmm. connected back in. And then the class ended. And then Sensei said, congratulations, you passed your showdown. And of course I started crying <laughs> uh, because I didn't expect it. Animators. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So it, um, I think it was great. a great experience. Thank yeah, very great. well deserved as well. Um, you must have been a bit shell shocked afterwards. Like, what just happened? Yeah, I I couldn't sleep until because we went to celebrate after, and then I couldn't uh, sleep at uh, un until three a.m. or so. I was like still full of energy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, it was really nice. Great. Right. Um, th these are huge updates, actually. Like. Um, okay. I think if, if we get a message from all of these is is like life changes <laughs> all the time yeah. and yeah exactly. our training is the constant constant but all these new things happen yeah um, absolutely um the next thing important thing is that uh after uh around December January maybe you had uh, a great idea of organizing uh it was a few uh, it was yeah it was a few days before um it was before the new year actually mm, um okay. I can't remember how this idea came about but I was thinking about International Women's Day and I was thinking about how I guess it's because you you had just passed your showdown Elvira had just been awarded her showdown as well um, at the end of the year that I think that was like the last announcement of the year that Elvira was um, had been promoted mm -hmm. and I think I was just kind of you know thinking about Aikido as I normally do and I thought <laughs> wouldn't it be cool if we had because I because I know that um, usually for International Women's Day uh, Sensei put some kind of video together of all the women in the dojo because as mm -hmm. we've spoken about before there's a strong um, w there's a strong Appreciate representation it. of women in in the dojo and um yeah and I just thought like oh wouldn't it be cool if instead of like a video like the videos are great but then I thought why what if we did like um just like a one day event you know like some, sometimes we have these charity events and things like that I thought what if we did a one day event where it was taught only by um the women of, of mm -hmm. the dojo and of course I thought of um I thought of us us four so the the four the same four people as the first episode um the first episode of, a, of of season one um so it was me you beth and elvira um so yeah i was thinking about it and i was kind of like oh um you know it's not really the dumb thing to ask your teacher if you know you can teach a seminar <laughs> so i was like oh i'll just I'll just float the idea and see what he says and i was kind of like um uh what do you, what do you think um I can't, I can't even remember where where i think it was in his house um because mm -hmm. you know i was living there at the time um and i was like sensei what what do you think about um you know if <laughs> on international women's day we had a seminar and maybe like we we taught it and you know i was a bit sheepish i think and he was just like yeah sounds like a good idea like you organize it <laughs> I was like oh shit <laughs> okay <laughs> you know I was kind of I imagined that he would be supportive of it um 
but then I was a bit like oh god okay it's happening then um and then the next thing was he said um I think it should be two days rather than just one day um and it will be the main event for this half of the year and it was like oh <laughs> okay so <laughs> it just became a bigger thing um and uh yeah and so so we started to think like how you know could we do it for some kind of charity um and so in the end we decided to um donate the proceeds to solace women's aid in in london um a very worthy uh, cause and um and it, it kind of i guess the the event it kind of grew and grew didn't it because um originally it was just us teaching and then everyone welcome kind of thing, just, mm. just having a, a good a good training time um but then some people from the dojo were saying like oh a friend of mine is interested in coming yeah. like, can they come and i was like well have they done aikido before no right <laughs> okay well um and we sort of said oh it's not really ideal if you've never done aikido before to to come to just a seminar because you know class and not, yeah. yeah you have to but someone has to look after you someone has to show you what to do um but there was such a strong interest that it was like okay well let's run a workshop alongside it so that was the first event of the day um and i think you did it didn't you fran um, yes you were yeah, i think that the process where uh, because we we it it was something that had never been done before mm. um it had this we had to think a lot about how to make it welcoming for people who hadn't done Aikido or any martial art before, and also ma maintain this this message of we want to support uh, women in their practice, um, and also make and it just, interesting. For... And just to be clear as well, it wasn't just, uh, the workshop wasn't just for women, so- No, no exactly, exactly. Well. Yeah, it's yes. just that it was led by women. Exactly, so like, exactly, sh showcasing the um the women in our in our dojo basically but also we beside apart from those two or three things we had to to make it interesting for our for for our friends as well like to to have to keep them motivated and and yeah. think like oh wow like uh, Kathy's a cool teacher like uh, things like that like to 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 keep them energized and and, and engaged and excited mm -hmm. for, for being there so there was a a, a lot of I mean, Kathy, it, it, you were kind of orchestrating <laughs> the <laughs> the organization and and making the 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 message that we wanted to get, making sure that the message that we wanted to get across was was clear. Mm -hmm. um, the the other thing was we had, of course, to adapt at the last minute uh, how we handled the the open workshop at the same yeah. time as as the official the official beginners class. Um, and I, yeah, it's true. I, I had to do the, the open workshop and. Well, I think you led it very well. Um, it was, it was just the right, like the, you know, because it was kind of a bit more fun than like, mm. but that mm -hmm. sounds really bad actually. No, no, no. But <laughs> it, it wasn't, it wasn't more fun. Yeah. It was more lighthearted, I would say exactly. than a regular, than a regular lesson because, you know, it's for the public. It's, mm -hmm. it was for people that are not necessarily going to continue. They just wanted to support exactly. the event um so yeah it was it was fantastic and I think what was what was cool about it um I don't know if this is just me presuming but I noticed that after we started advertising the um the seminar I suddenly noticed like lots of other um International Women's Day Aikido events were happening um mm. and I don't know I don't know if ours is the one that kind of triggered it or inspired it mm. but if it was, it's it's cool, but it was it was nice to see um, all these other events suddenly popping up on Facebook and um, and then of course my mind was going like, how can we next year? How can we co connect all of these different events together? <laughs> I don't know, you know, whatever. Yeah. I get carried away sometimes, but um, but it was nice to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that most do just do do these uh, posts and. Right, written reflections with videos and images of, of yeah. what practices being a woman and things like that 
but but it's true that it's not very common to to see dedicated events um uh and it's true it was great to to see other similar events popping yeah. up um do we have any any other uh bigger bigger updates so one of the things that um that fran and i that we were talking about being women talk budo which is our the name of our program um a lot of people understandably want us to talk or want us to create a platform where people can talk about their experiences possibly hinting at like their more negative experiences mm -hmm. um being being a woman and and training and and some of those some of the difficulties that they might have had but we have found that understandably people can be can actually shy away from talking openly and publicly about it um but it doesn't stop it from being a topic that people seem to want to hear about so you know we as you like fran we've been we've been discussing like how how we can kind of include that in our podcast and at the same time not kind of make people feel exposed or vulnerable keeping the integrity of whoever uh, is is our guest on that day or yeah. whoever decides to share their their stories yeah. Uh, with us. yeah and just to give like a small like an anticipation of, of the next episode um with Ru Heinz we will talk about the practice of Japanese arts in a western context it is something that we partially uh, discussed with Jess in the first season so please go and listen to the episode if you're particularly interested in that uh but this episode will be a bit more dedicated uh to that topic so i think that's um basically everything that we we've been up to everything that there is to tell so um if you haven't listened to the previous season um have a listen it's on youtube uh we're on instagram as well we'll hopefully some things will flash up on the screen now telling you where to where to go um so yeah more to come soon you've been listening to my perspective where women talk budo.